After an initial run in 2015 to huge public and critical acclaim, the Orange O-Base is back with some tweaks, both big and small, to cement its position as one of the easiest playing, most colorful, and most versatile bass guitars out there. The best bits of the original O-Base have been retained. There's the classic single cutaway body shape and the split coil pickup position slightly more neckwards than most other basses. All the better for producing that deep, warm growl. And then come the improvements. Immediately obvious is the binding that's been added all around the instrument to give it a premium feel. And the headstock is now black. But plenty of innovation lurks beyond the cosmetic too, helping the Obase play even better than ever. A body made from West African Okume wood and a fretboard now made from super durable Purple Heart balances the instrument to perfection, whether it's played stood up or seated. And with the fretwork and neck molding retooled with playability in mind, jumping around the neck and funky octave swoops have never felt more natural. <laughs> At least that's what Orange has to say about the updated Obase. I myself have some notes. Right out of the gate, they claim that the Obase is one of the easiest playing, most colorful, most versatile basses out there. And I think at least one of those things is true. I am genuinely not impressed by the playability of this instrument. I genuinely get tired as I'm playing it, which is ridiculous because I'm used to playing three to four hour gigs, sometimes on five string basses, and 20 minutes on this thing wears me out. Let's just start with this neck. Right up here at the nut, you're gonna get a 44 millimeter width, which is kind of crazy if you compare it to a standard P bass, which is gonna be more in the 41, 42 millimeter range. It also doesn't help that this neck is finished in the same glossy paint that the body is, which means that as soon as you develop any moisture or sweat on your hands, it's gonna start to stick to it. There's a reason that not many people do this, or if they do paint the neck, they'd go with a satin finish like you find on my Yamaha BB735. The fretwork, on the other hand, is really great. It's smooth all the way up, aside from this one little blemish here on the fifth fret on this example. Uh, you'll also notice that they've got purple heart on these instead of ebony on the previous generation. Some people might see that as kind of a downgrade. I myself don't care about wood too much. However, I will say that this fretboard looks a bit dry to me. Oh, and by the way, this is a standard 34 inch scale base. I kind of thought that it was short scale when I pulled it out of the gig bag that they include, but it is a full scale base. Moving down the neck to this Les Paul style slab body, we get to the next uncomfortable part, which is this hard 90 degree edge all the way around. Now to get the binding to look this good, you of course have to do that. But when you forego the body contours, these tend to dig into your forearm, especially when you're sitting down. I found it to be really uncomfortable, especially with a pick. Now I kind of showed this earlier, but this base is not all that well balanced either holding it up with your fretting hand, which is not great technique, or you're holding this end of it down with your forearm, which just exacerbates that whole issue. While I can applaud Orange for trying something really bold and unique with this bass, the truth is, is that with the strap button here instead of up here and with this body shape, it's just impossible to balance. To their credit, they tried using a heavier body wood, but then you just end up with a heavier bass. This one's about nine and a half pounds, and it's no less neck heavy. The hardware on this bass is pretty okay. It's basically right in line with what you'd expect from basses at this price range. The tuning machine's all right. The bridge down here is just a slightly heavier mass uh, Fender style vintage bridge, which is, you know, a standard for a reason. The volume and tone knobs do actually seem to be of great quality. Orange, as you know, is better known as an amp company, and I'm happy to report that their sensibility seems to have translated really well to this aspect of the bass. They turn really nice and smooth, and there's a good linearity to them, meaning that the entire sweep is useful. On a lot of cheaper basses, you'll find that the knobs uh, don't do anything until right at the end, and you feel like you might as well just have an on-off switch instead of a knob. The 
The sound of this bass is great. It's that classic P bass sound with just a little bit more low end because this pickup is pushed about a quarter inch closer to the neck. This bass seems to have not been grounded properly, so it does hum when you're not touching it, and that hum goes away when you touch any metal parts of the bass. Small thing, but worth noting. As far as it being the most versatile bass, P basses are versatile in the sense that they have one sound that just kind of works in a lot of different contexts, but to call your one pickup two control bass versatile is um, not how I would describe it. Ultimately, it seems like Orange wants this to be as attractive as possible to guitar players rather than bass players. It's like they looked at Gibson and were just copying their home, but Gibson isn't exactly acing the test, so I don't know why they would go that direction with it. But for a video. Anyway, would I recommend the Orange O bass? No. But thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. AMP out.